I'm at the Waters and Stanton demonstration facility here in Hockley and we're going to have a look at the Ellicraft K3 fitted with a 2 meter transverter. Now this is quite a popular option but some people wonder how good the performance is of the transverter. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare it with the ICOM IC910H. Now that tends to be our reference transceiver here. We know that it's got a very good 2 meter performance so it's a good reference for the uh, Ellicraft setup. And both transceivers are connected to a 10 over 10 2 meter array, uh, in fact the LF array from Innov antennas. And we're pointing it at uh, the uh, Dutch beacon at the moment and I can switch between the two so let's see what we can hear. That's on the Ellicraft K3 and a fairly reasonable signal. So let's now turn the gain down and go over to the ICOM. Not too much difference. And hopefully we'll get some CW in a minute. This is the Ellicraft K3. It's the Ellicraft K3. And that's the icon. I'll try and get the same pitch. Okay, so that's the that's the icon. And that's the K3. I'll turn the beam, turn the audio down a bit. I'll turn the beam away so we reduce the signal strength. Got a bit of noise coming up now, that's not too far um, above the noise level. You can hear the icon, that's the icon, and that's the Ellicraft. Back to the icon. the icon and that's the helicraft. Now if I turn the beam we get a nice strong signal. That nice strong signal is uh, due to the superb LFA 2 metre yard as we've got on the roof. Try and, try and get the audio the same. So, what have we proved? Well, on extensive tests here, I have to admit that uh, it's very difficult to choose between the two of them. Uh, in many respects, the receiver performance is much the same. I think the Ellicraft wins slightly um, because of its uh, greater control over selectivity. And certainly if you close the selectivity down on the uh, Ellicraft, you can really make the signal stand out. bit more noise with the uh, icon there. So, as I say, I think uh, there is no winner. They're very similar transceivers. Um, and if you've got a K3 and you're thinking of uh, adding a 2 meter transverter to it, then certainly you shouldn't be worried about the received performance. It's absolutely fine. Right, and uh, <clears throat> to continue the test, I thought, uh, while I've got all the gear here, let's compare the K3 with the KX3. Uh, like the K3, the KX3 can have a 2 meter transverter added to it. So I've got a KX3 here on the top of the K3. The KX3 has got a transverter fitted to it. And I'm going to compare the two performances by switching between the two transceivers, again with the same antenna, the 10 over 10 2 meter LFA array. So let's see how it goes. Well, 
At the moment I'm listening on the K3. And there we are, that's the keying on the K3. And that's the signal on the KX3. And that's the signal on the K3. Go back to the KX3. That's the KX3. And that's the K3. Take the signal down a bit. Well, there's some QSB there as well, so we've lost it a bit. Let's come back a bit. So that's on the K3. And that's on the KX3. KX3, K3. Let's turn that down so you can hear me. So another conclusion really to come to is that really and truly there's hardly any difference between the KX3 and the K3 with the transverse fitted. They're both fine two metre performers. So if you're thinking of adding a transverter to the K3 or the KX3, then have no worries. The performance is really, uh, really superb. Certainly uh, matches our reference transceiver here. And uh, uh, I can thoroughly recommend them.